All right, uh, now I'd like to introduce, if you guys are all wondering what that large bus is right outside the doors, um, this is uh, Mike from Startup Maryland, and he can tell you all about it. So without further ado, please welcome Mike Binko. Great, thank you. And thank you all for hanging on. I know this has been a, a, a jam-packed day here at uh, Hopkins and the TCO Labs. We want to thank the team uh, for, for putting together an event that's important. Um, it's important not only to you guys uh, in the audience as students here or supporters of the university or alumni. We've heard from many alumni today. But it's important for us. And, and I'll talk to you a little bit about who I am, why I do what I do, um, and how uh, we participate in the, what we call an ecosystem model for innovation and entrepreneurship. And what we mean by ecosystem is that no organization can really do it themselves. No entrepreneur can do it themselves. They need a team of either co-founders or great talent on their team. They need resources, service providers, academia environments, uh, a whole host of capabilities that are not necessarily your strong suit. And that's something that we counsel very actively with the entrepreneurs that we meet and nurture as Startup Maryland, is to know what you know, but know what you don't know, and surround yourself with folks who do. That is usually the mark of entrepreneurs that get it the most, and they're going to hit their hyperglide that inflection point of building their business and taking it forward. Investors invest in what? Who knows the answer to what is the primary thing that investors look at? Early stage. Ideas? I loaded. Got it. Yes, it's people. Um, it's not product, typically. Um, ideas, uh, certainly they want to be in tune with that. They want it on the radar screen. But if they've got um, you know, dry powder to put to work, they want to make sure that the entrepreneurs that they're backing have the acumen to drive a le and lead a business that's going to be hyper growth. They're not looking to usually back a lifestyle business for the founder. Um, they want 10x plus. We're, we're talking about ways to get it from kind of 10x plus to a little bit lower than that. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today. So uh, I'm kind of the, the player to be named later uh, for the event here. Um, we uh, got together with the TCO Lab team really uh, on entrepreneur time in the last couple of weeks and indicated that we were going to be launching our uh, tour around the state, which we call the Start One Up Roadshow. And it basically turns into a pitch competition as we're going around the state with the bus that you see outside. We are inviting the best and the brightest undiscovered entrepreneurs in our region to come and meet us at a tour stop. So Johns Hopkins here at TCO Labs is the first stop of probably about 40 or 42 stops that we're going to hit this year. Um, this is the first year we're doing the tour throughout the year. We used to just do it in September and October. So 34 stops in 14 days is um, a bit taxing on the psyche uh, and the team. So we decided to do it throughout the year. Um, one of the reasons why we decided to do that is that every organization that is a tour stop co-host with us said, hey, we love that the, the, the tour kind of blows through town and we can kind of celebrate ourselves. And you, you put the megaphone in our hand and you amplify the good things that we're doing. And then you celebrate our entrepreneurs in our community. But we'd like to have you here and maybe do a little more programming around the other things that our entrepreneurs need other than celebration. And we're happy to do that. So the mission of Startup Maryland, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. And then I'd like to introduce a few of the ecosystem um, leaders that we work with, and one that you're going to hear from in about 20 minutes, um, uh, Richard May, is Startup Maryland was an organization that was kind of born for a purpose. And those of us who founded it were serial entrepreneurs, multiple starts, hopefully multiple exits, probably a couple failures, probably multiple failures. The common DNA trait is that we were willing to share our experiences with other entrepreneurs. And the main mission of Startup Maryland as we launched it was, we want to be the easy button for entrepreneurs, and we want to be their peer organization. No other. We looked around the, the state and even the broader region, and we tried to find an organization that was entrepreneur-led and entrepreneur-mission-driven. And there's pockets of it around the region, but um, no organization really claimed that as their mission. So for us, we kind of sat back and said, there's a couple of things we could do or that we know we need to do, but let's go talk to the entrepreneurs. So the idea of the bus tour really started before we launched Startup Maryland. We decided to do our own little um, roadshow, a listening tour. 
And we went around the state. We probably hit five locations in the key hubs. And we listened. We kind of did a Dr. Phil session with entrepreneurs where we would, oh, thanks, Gabe. Just swipe it. It'll come back up. Thanks. Where we would kind of sit back and throw some thoughts out. And then on the whiteboards in the rooms, we would, we would put up on the board, well, what, what's working in your community? What frustrates you? What do you need to get in your mind to that next step? And do you have that resource available to you? Well, four things kind of bubbled up to the top of about 40 things. And we were able to map them to words that start with the letter C. So for us, our four Cs that drive our mission are celebration, coaching, curation, and capital. So what do we mean by celebration? In Silicon Valley and Boulder and Austin and New England and Chicago and in the Southeast, they do a really good job of celebrating themselves as Silicon Valley or Silicon Prairie. In the Mid-Atlantic, maybe it's because there's a big political um, vortex of news happening about 40 miles south of us, but whether it's Virginia, Washington, D.C., or Maryland, what we call the DMV does not celebrate its entrepreneurs like a Silicon Valley does. So the first, and many of us who built businesses realize the struggles of not being recognized by your community of elected officials, economic developers, academic institutions, and other entrepreneur peers was a mitigating factor. And it limited the ability of this region to attract talent to either stay here or come here and investing dollars to come here, particularly at the earliest stages. So um, celebration is the bus tour. Um, that's our way to kind of go to the entrepreneurs. Um, a handful of folks from TCO uh, we're kind of winnowed down to come on the bus, and we have a video studio in the back of the bus. As we go around the state, entrepreneurs get two to four minutes to pitch their idea. So think, you know, Shark Tank-ish, but um, not as many egos in the room um, <laughs> to kind of counteract it. Um, but we also felt that you could do the four-page executive summary or the full business plan in written form or PowerPoint deck or what have you, but what sells the opportunity to investors the most? What was the first question? What do investors invest in. It's the founders and the management team. Bar none. That's what they look at. So we wanted to arm founders with a tool to celebrate themselves. And when we come to you in Salisbury or Frederick, Maryland, or here on the, uh, on the campus of Johns Hopkins, we're coming to you, but we want to bring your opportunity and your story back with us. And we want it to be done in your words, with your passion, with your enthusiasm, with your facial expressions, I'm doing this, and I'm now at a point where I need some help. So that point of knowing what you don't know and surrounding yourself with people who do, that's where our first C of celebration turns into coaching. So our coaching is a boot camp style. Uh, once you've kind of been discovered through the tour over the, now we're gonna do it for uh, eight months, we then kind of invite entrepreneurs that are kind of separating themselves from the pack or they're ready to go, they're coming out of idea stage, they're probably in a bootstrap stage and moving to what we call ramp up or speed up. We invite those entrepreneurs to come through. Uh, it's about an eight-week boot camp program. And the sessions cover six topics that every founding CXO needs to be dangerous with. Kevin Plank teaches you how to be a strong CEO leader. Who wouldn't want to sit in a room with 12 other entrepreneurs and hear that? Vince Talbert teaches you how he sold his company, um, Bill Me Later, to PayPal. How do you roadmap from the beginning to an exit? You don't think about the exit when you're wanting to do it. You think about it when you're founding your business. How do you build a great team? Shahab Kaviani, they won our first year of our competition, built a little company called Co-Founders Lab. Has anybody gone to a Co-Founders Lab meetup or used their tool online? Rich May over there. It is an excellent tool, and it is still out there. If you are a founder and you're looking for that co-founder, that's their rubric. Their alchemy is matching co-founders across the world. Once you learn how to attract your co-founder and build a great team, we focus on lean and agile approach to building your business. That's something that every entrepreneur in this day and age needs to become dangerous with lean and agile. And there's a lot of ways to do it. And a lot of great entrepreneurs locally that have, that have done it and are willing to share. The last two sessions are pathways to funding and how to exit well as an entrepreneur. And this is taught by folks that have done it. They've lived it in good ways. They've lived it in bad ways. The one that everybody kind of harkens to is a gentleman named Mark Anstey, who built a company called DataStream. 
He didn't take any early stage equity. He did it all with traditional lenders. He grew through acquisition and profit. And he sold for $45 million to the Dolan Company, a publicly traded New York Stock Exchange company. Um, exited quite well. He's become a champion for uh, Startup Maryland and one of our angels that, that um, we're, we're kind of introducing to the new, the new deal flow that we're finding. So exiting well, as I mentioned, begins with starting well. And starting well often means finding those folks that round out your skill set and your capabilities. But if you decide that you're going to raise outside capital, go beyond your own friends, family, funding, founders, funding, or revenue, if you can get it, there are certain skills, certain challenges, and certain approaches to fundraising that are critical at the earliest stages. You have to build your network. You are not likely going to stumble into, across angels in your own network if you're a new entrepreneur, just because you haven't been out there enough. And certainly if you're younger, you know, Dave, talk, Dave Troy talked this morning about there are some real strong benefits to be a founding entrepreneur when you're in school or just out of school, because you can often be subsidized by, okay, I'm going to live at home for another year with the parents. Um, that's not always there when you kind of get into the 20s and 30s and have other responsibilities. So you may have to find outside funding. So for us in our four C's, the celebration, morphing into coaching, turning into curation, which is almost a virtual accelerator model. Um, one of my backgrounds is I built a for-profit accelerator in Northern Virginia back in the late 90s and early 2000s, focused on internetworking and related internet um, opportunities. Um, learned a lot in building that accelerator. And one of the things that we learned as an accelerator was we needed to have a pool of early stage angel equity funding looking and ready to look at our, at our portfolio that we wanted to um, bring out to the market. So for us, that last sea of capital, we could have done a lot of things. Um, a lot of companies are nece not necessarily needing or, or able to raise equity funding, uh, so they may look for a lender. We typically would encourage uh, successful serial entrepreneurs to possibly look there first probably because they are able to be underwritten um, financially. If you can raise debt funding to grow your business in those earliest stages and you're comfortable with that as an entrepreneur, don't give up equity if you don't need to. But if equity is your really only pathway and really only element that you have to bring to bear to raise funding, you need to understand the mechanics of that, and so do the angels. One of the challenges of the Mid-Atlantic that we've discovered, and I personally have seen as an angel in this space in tech for over 20 years, is that we don't have enough angels that understand deal flow is not an exercise in risk mitigation. And there's, a lot, there's five cocktail conversation about why <laughs> angels in this region have that mentality. It starts with a lot of less risky investment opportunities are available to them in their wealth strategy real estate being number one. The Northeast corridor from DC, Richmond even, up to Boston and New England is probably the most profitable real estate, extended real estate market for investment in the country. LA would argue, but I think the premiums and the value are there with the, with the government um, really being the buoy in DC. That has impacted the appetite for early stage equity investment in this region, for good or for bad. And when somebody who has typically done real estate investment decides to invest in early stage tech equity. Um, they often bring, I don't want to say baggage, but there are elements of doing real estate deals that don't carry over to early stage tech. And the terms that we had seen, and guilty of it in the first couple of angel investments that I did, is you try. You, in the middle end, you just try to get as much out of the startup as you can as an angel. And that mentality is killing this region. So our capital equation of the mission of Startup Maryland was to, number one, bring great deal flow in the entrepreneurs and startups that we discovered and celebrated, coached and curated, to the table for investors that are ready to act. Well, right now, you know, whether it's um, Baltimore Angels, Blue Venture investors down in um, suburban DC, John May's group, there's probably about eight to 10 active angel groups in the Mid-Atlantic from the DMV. Um, it's not enough. They each will probably look at 100 deals a week on their table. You've got to stand out from the noise, but they also, we need more angels building syndicates and becoming high net worth in investors in funds. 
So we realized that we had started in our first five years of Startup Maryland focusing on the entrepreneur at the asset class, nurturing them and making them as, as investable as possible. And we have to be realistic about it. In the five years, we've engaged with 1,500 startups that are all innovation and tech-tilted firms in Maryland. Um, business analyst at Hopkins helped us do the numbers. 18 to 28% of them are equity fundable. Another 20% are debt fundable. That leaves half of the companies are not going to be viable for funding. Um, that's probably better than most um, numbers you hear just in the macro early stage. But those 18 to 28% that are equity fundable, we needed to, on the other side of the equation, have an engagement process for investors to start looking at those deals and putting syndicates together. So we decided to do a boot camp for angels, and we call it Angel Academy. Um, it is a um, intense kind of day and a half session. We're not going to do it over eight weeks because you'll lose the attention of angels. But what we do in the Angel Academy is we bring um, a, six topics that any angel needs to be dangerous with. So we're trying to keep it on par with what we do for the startups. And it's from why is angel investing a good opportunity for you now in your wealth strategy? Um, anybody familiar with the Jobs Act, J-O-B-S? Uh, yeah, I knew you would be. Um, the Jobs Act was a piece of legislation that was um, brought forth about four and a half years ago. But until last March, so we're really only a, a, a year and a month away from the last title of that act passing, it's related to equity crowdfunding and related early stage equity investing. It was a play because the pathways to an exit for equity investors were starting to tighten with um, initial public offerings and related um, traditional public markets uh, opportunities for exits were kind of only available to the cream of the crop companies that really could stomach the financial need to go public or the requirements on the financial side to go public. And it was stifling innovation. So um, uh, the founder of Startup America, uh, one of the founders, Steve Case, through his foundation with his wife, Jean, were big proponents behind finding a new equation for early stage investors to roadmap to an exit. Um, one of the areas they, he concentrated on in the policy was having the SEC and other regulators on the state levels in tune with the fact that the need for high level of capital in a lot of our tech-centric innovations is not what it was 15 or 20 years ago. When I was an early employee at PSINet, look it up someday, um, one of the first commercial internet providers, we raised $112 million to bring that capability to market. Then we went on and raised $1.4 the appetite was there once we started proving out the viability of this internet for commercials. But Bill Schrader, who founded that, had a really tough time finding those first angel investors, particularly in this region. And Steve had the same challenge when he was doing America Online. So when Steve launched Startup America, and his foundation did it in partnership with the Kaufman Foundation for Entrepreneurship. Is anybody familiar with, who is familiar with Kaufman? Okay, any entrepreneur should be, because the data that they find and the research that they do and some training programs that they have absolutely needs to be on your radar screen. And they are probably the first source for real data in your market sector, whatever it is, or your innovation category. So for us, in kind of looking at, okay, we're, we're celebrating, coaching, and curating deal flow. Our entrepreneurs are ready for funding, but they're not finding it locally. Bringing investors into a boot camp was our best way to do it. We started to also look at what is the landscape for potential angels. So folks that are not currently active as angels, we call them sideline angels. That's a term that we use to kind of identify the folks that should and could be, but for whatever reason are not angels in the community. One of the ways that we decided to approach them was while we're doing these tour stops, and we're going to be on site for more than just an hour and a half or two hours now, we're going to do like a half day. And we're going to introduce them to the entrepreneurs maybe from last year that are hitting their stride, ready for investment, fundable. And we're going to introduce them to the angels that we're training to look at the deal flow differently than they have. It's not a real estate investment. It's real risky early stage equity. If you're not comfortable with that, hang with us sit on the sidelines and watch the alchemy that happens. 
If you are ready to go at whatever level, we wanted to bake in almost four pathways to equity funding for any potential angel. One would be the traditional um, Kickstarter, Indiegogo um, type of crowdfunding that's not equity. If you have never done an angel investment, crowdfunding, the reward type or whatever type you might be interested in, maybe double bottom line type for social engagement and entrepreneurship is a great way to start. You'll probably get something that is meaningful to you. The companies probably have affinity for your, your interests. That's a great place to start. You can often build a portfolio there for under $50,000. You can get involved with five, seven companies. Building a portfolio is absolutely critical as an angel. You cannot expect a success on one, two, or three companies. Typically, the, the model is 10 companies in your portfolio are going to return one out, of, one out of the 10 is going to return a, a home run or better. Um, two to three out of, the, out of the 10 are going to kind of eh, be marginal. Maybe you'll kick one of them over the, over the line, but um, two of them are not. And seven are probably going to be a, a no-go for you. They will probably dissolve. That's historical numbers. A lot of us believe that are building ecosystems that the future could be a little different than that. And it's because the cost of investment for most of the innovations that are emerging now, whether it be social engagement, data analytics, visualization, Internet of Things and everything, autonomous systems, don't require big capital expenses or costs to get them off the ground. You can do things for less than $100,000 now that probably would have taken um, you know, several six-figure rounds to get done. That's good news for you guys. As potential entrepreneurs, innovators, you maybe have some subject matter expertise, you can bring your ideas to market a lot quicker and a lot more efficiently financially. It's also good news for angels. So we are also tuning our deal flow in the companies that we're finding to be consumable by investors based on a couple of metrics. Um, life cycle stage, so typically coming out of idea into bootstrap stage is more for syndicates of angels. Uh, going from bootstrap to what we call ramp up is usually going to be your high net worth, significant, um, uh, more wealthy angels that can stroke the big checks, possibly lead around um, with other angels maybe outside the region. That typically has not happened here. Our angels are typically not leading rounds. A lot of folks would argue that, um, and a lot of our angel groups that are, have been active now for more than three or five years are proving that that's not the case. We need more of it. We have a goal. Um, we've identified um, over 15,000 sideline angels from northern Virginia up to suburban Philly ready to be activated. We have a goal of training 500 of them in the next two years through the Angel Academy program. So. Um, one of the things I'd like to introduce, uh, or one of the people I'd like to introduce who's here with us and has been a great champion of this effort um, and is the right type of ecosystem supporter that you need to know about is Gabe Solano um, right here. So Gabe um, is the founder and principal of a group, um, BBS. They focus in their day job on bringing innovative and, and disruptive benefits to startups that need them. But Gabe is also uh, in tune with a network of Wealth advisors are part of his network. Benefits also include how to manage your wealth if you, eg if you exit and have a strategy and a glide path for preserving that for you and your family. Uh, that community represents about a, a quarter of sideline angels are represented by wealth advisors and folks that do wealth strategy benefits. So that community is invited into our angel academies Maybe not for themselves personally, but their 100 portfolio clients that they do wealth advising for are really good candidates for angel investing. So um, in the Angel Academy, we basically are trying to marry our deal flow that's been curated over essentially uh, about nine months to 18 months. If you've been through celebration, coaching, and curation, you've been inside the Startup Maryland Wire for about a year. So we know the ones that are raising funds credibly and also have the chops to do it as a team. So um, we will introduce our portfolio to investors. We believe that once we get over 100 angels that have been through the boot camp or the Angel Academy, that the deal flow is going to start to right size around two areas. And it's not geography. Geography is not a factor that we're 
were polling in our investors. It is industry sector that they may have had experience in in their career, or innovation category that they're also maybe a subject matter expert, or they have interest in getting behind, either from a hobby interest or that's what they always wanted to do as their business or their career. We believe combining the subject matter expert type investors with the opportunities that are ready to go is also going to bring this region up a notch. We breed more entrepreneurs in this region that are PhDs and engineers, many of them out of Hopkins, that don't stay here. They go elsewhere. And the number one reason they go elsewhere, early stage equity term. With Techstars, 500 Startups, and Y Combinator, the terms that they're seeing outside of this region are off at, have been more aggressive. And I would say that's getting a lot better. It was that way really up until about three years ago. And the terms in this region early stage are getting a lot better for entrepreneurs. Another reason to stay. So I leave you with that. Um, we would encourage anybody that is coming out of kind of the idea stage into bootstrap stage, start up. Um, whether you're going to do it now or maybe you have a postgrad uh, continuum that you're pursuing on, we still want you involved with the community of ecosystem around early stage entrepreneurship and innovation. And we would invite you to get involved in not only our programs, but other programs at Hopkins, uh, whether it be on the fast forward side um, with Chrissy Wiskiel and her team on more of the tech transfer side, but also look across the academia environment. I think in this city, particularly Baltimore, whether it be a Hopkins, a UBALT, a MICA, there is a mix of talent in this city that we are educating and breeding that we export out of this region. Many of you are probably, and I'm, gonna, I'm off to California, or I'm up to New York, I'm down to Miami, whatever it is. I would, I would caution you or ha hazard that you take some time to really get involved in what we call the ecosystem that is, that is percolating here. Um, it's compelling, it's getting deeper, and I think the resources are starting, the resource providers, including angel investors, are starting to realize that the deal flow that we're breeding and nurturing here is compelling and is going to be a part of their investment strategy moving forward. So um, those that pitched on the bus today through the TCO Labs, we welcome you into the celebration cadre. Those of you who didn't, you still are able to kind of apply yourself um, to get on the bus and join us at another tour stop. Mike Venezia was here a little bit ago. He's our ecosystem director, uh, but he's coordinating all of the applicants for the pitch um, competition that we do. And we would encourage you also to keep an eye out for our entrepreneur boot camp when we'll be kicking that off later in the year. Um, if you are in a position personally to be an angel or you know somebody who is, we would certainly welcome your introduction to them and encourage them to come and meet us at a tour stop. They can be a fly on the wall if they want to, or they can kind of raise their hand and say, I'm ready. Um, we've got a glide path for all of them. But I want to salute TCO Labs and the team that did that. You know, we say entrepreneurs have day jobs. Well, students have day jobs, and doing something on the side that is this meaningful is really a credit to that team that got together and, and really wanted to bring something to the undergrad community here at Hopkins, um, which, you know, it, it, it's worth investing that early. We salute that. And I want to thank you guys for coming. I mean, the day before Easter, love the time to hatch. But, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's difficult to invest in something when you could be enjoying a lacrosse game that is meaningful or going home to visit your family or hanging out with your friends in a, on a wonderful um, spring day. So thank you all. Um, we consider you all champions of the entrepreneur ecosystem that we're breeding around innovation and entrepreneurship. And we look forward to seeing you at some point in the next year on the tour. Thanks.